This is the Blackview MP200, a $349 device that the manufacturers say is perfect for gaming. Is it perfect for gaming? Let's find out. So we're gonna start off with a quick unboxing. And first we have the Blackview itself. And let's see what else we have inside the box. And this is what comes inside the box. First, we have the actual Blackview PC itself. We also have a massive 120 watt adapter here, a power plug, a stand, HDMI cable, instruction manual, 2.5 inch hard drive mounting hardware, and some mounting screws as well. All right, moving on, let's look at the hardware of the Blackview MP200. As you can see, the top part of the Blackview, it does have this kind of textured lined surface over here. This one going this way, this one going this way, and this one going down like this. And you can see that there's a lot of uh, striations in the light. Um, this also makes it so that the uh, fingerprints are not kept on this for a very long time. As you can see, I'll touch them, and then you'll see the fingerprints kind of stay there and move away and then you have the Blackview logo on the top. If you move it over to the back side of the device, here we have the same striations over here like this and like this and then on the bottom we have a little sticker that talks about the various things that are inside, for example the CPU, the RAM as well as the hard drive. And on the front here we have the power button, we have a headphone jack, we have two USB 3 ports as well as a USB-C port. And on the flip side here, we have the power jack, we have your ethernet jack, we have an HDMI port, a display port, and two more USB ports for you. And at the back, you can see that there is vents here and a radiator on the inside for cooling. And on this side here, we have nothing except for the Intel Core i5 sticker. And then on the back side here, what we have are uh, some vents here, as well as two screws that you're going to undo with a screwdriver in order to access the internals of the PC. So after undoing the two screws on this side, what you're gonna do is you're going to grab the top and you're gonna slide it to the right side and lift up. And there we go, we have access to the inside of the device. You can see that here we have a little plug for a 2.5 inch uh, hard drive here and that's where those mounting screws and the mounting hardware comes into play you can mount it there and here we have a 4c 512 gigabyte ssd and finally on this side we have one stick of 16 gigabyte ddr4 ram and here you can go up to 128 gigabytes of ram but i will leave it at 16 gigs for now and we'll test it that way so for the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna be using this stand that they include uh, because of the video, but what you can do is you can actually slot this into this. No screws are needed. It's just a um, rubber stand and it will keep it fairly secure. Um, I probably won't be using this even after the review just because I like it lying flat. It's a lot safer, but you know, that's up to you. All right, so let's time how long it takes from boot up. So it's going to be three, two, one, So that's 18 seconds from start to finish all the way to the login screen. That is not bad at all. So let's talk about the general responsiveness of the device. I have to say it's quite good. The 11400H does a very, very good job at being very responsive. As you can see, everything launched basically instantly. I'm going to open up the Blackview website for this. Um, it's $399 here, but it's actually $349 on Amazon if you are a Prime member. But as you can see, everything loads basically instantly. And here I'm going to open up an 8K video in YouTube and it will play it perfectly fine. I'm just going to turn the quality up to 8K. No problem at all. Just a little bit of buffering. Yep, the 11400H does not break a sweat even with 8 video. All right, let's talk about benchmarks. And the first one we're going to look at is Geekbench. As you can see here, we got a score of 2092 for single core and 6290 for multi-core. So if we compare that to processor benchmarks, uh, we're going to go single core first. And 2092 is actually quite good. That puts us right in between the 5700X and the i7-12700. But when we go to multi-core, that's going to drop a lot. 
with a score of what is it 6290 6290 that drops us all the way down to right about here so 6293 an i5 11400h that's exactly what we have and it sits just above the 4900hs and just below the 11700t so that drops us quite a ways away because as you can see this only has six cores and the power limits are going to limit it because this is a mobile processor but otherwise still quite good scores here all right so now we're going to talk about the pass mark rating and the pass mark rating that we got here is 2625 that's not very high at all and if we compare that to other laptops so we're going to go to 2625 and that puts us right around the Ryzen 7 4800H or the Ryzen 9 4900 HS or the i5 10500H. But if we're looking for the actual 11400H, we see that at 2.7 gigahertz, um, it's actually all the way up at 3048. That's actually quite a bit higher than what we have. So I suspect that is down to power limits and throttling because it is a smaller box here. But again, we'll have to see. All right, lastly, let's talk about Cinebench benchmarks. And here you can see that the CPU score I got was 8122 for multi-core and 1456 for single core. So let's compare that to what we have here from Jared's Tech. And here we have 1456. That puts us right around a 5800H or 5900HX in the Asus VivoBook Pro or the MSI Delta 15 Advantage. However, if we jump to multi-core, which we got about an 8100, that drops us all the way back down to the MSI GF63 with the i5 11400H or the Ryzen 5 4600H. So that is the extent of our testing. Um, that is all the CPU testing that we're gonna be doing. All the GPU testing we'll be doing will be in game. So stay tuned for that. All right, and this is gonna be the first game that we're trying out. This is a Pro Evolution Soccer, also known as eFootball Now. It's running at 1080p, and as you can see, the resolution is uh, decent, but the frame rate is not. It's 15 to 18 FPS, so it's gonna be very difficult to play. I really wouldn't recommend you uh, use this box for playing this game because, as you can see, the resolution is very horrible. Um, if you bump it down to 720p, you can get around 25 FPS, but that's still barely playable over there. And here we're playing Civilization VI. And I have to say that it's actually quite a decent frame rate because this is a more CPU rather than GPU bound game. And as you can see, my frame rate hovers between 26 all the way up to 45 FPS, which is actually not bad for a game like this. So it's definitely playable. I would say I'm running at 1080p with lowest settings for everything else. Um, so it, you're not gonna be playing at highest settings, but it is definitely playable at that time. So um, yeah, that's uh, pretty decent for, and let's say an older game, so not bad at all. All right, so this is CSGO with bots. I'm currently playing at 1080p on lowest settings. And as you can see, it's actually pretty decent. I can go um, up to 60, 59 FPS. So that's not bad at all. I'm obviously very bad at this on a controller because I'm not used to that. I'm used to playing on a mouse, but uh, that's, that's what it looks like right now. So pretty decent I'm quite satisfied with this so let's uh, see what I can do with this all right guys so this is GTA 5 uh, currently running on the Blackview MP200 please note that when I ran it at 1080p the frame rate dropped to like 15 frames per second however when this comes to about run right now I'm running at about 1600 by 900 so that's actually not bad so I'm getting about 30 FPS which is playable on here so that's what we have right now and I'm gonna play a little bit and just see show you what we have all right so this is Fortnite, and as you can see I'm currently running at about 20 to 30 FPS as you can see the FPS kind of jumps up and down I'm currently running at 1080p uh, at lowest settings so that is currently what I'm doing right now and uh, let's see how the frame rate does as we go down um, I do notice that the frame rate is very choppy, so it does change very frequently. Um, so let's see what it does when we hit the ground here. So the frame rate is actually on the ground. We're looking at around 30 minimum. That's actually not bad. So um, running at 1080p, um, 
you're not going to be competitive, to be honest, at, uh, um, at uh, 30 FPS, especially in Fortnite, but you should be able to play it if you want. The graphics don't look great, though, because it is lowest settings possible at 1080p, but you should be able to play a little bit of Fortnite. All right, this is going to be the last game that I show you. This is Death Stranding at 720p. As you can see, this is a, you know, it's a newer AAA game and look at the frame rate. 13 frames per second, so definitely not playable, I will say. Um, but this just goes to show you what you can expect if you want to play a AAA game on a uh, box like this. So the one thing I dislike about this box is the fan noise. The fan noise here is quite noisy. Um, it does seem to be a PWM fan, so it does ramp from 0 to 100. But to my ears, it either sounds like it's off, 0, or kind of goes all the way to kind of like 50%. And then at 100%, it's so loud that if I'm sitting six feet away, I can still hear this playing on a different computer. Like I'm sitting at my other editing computer and I can hear the fan from six feet away. So this is a very, very loud fan and probably the biggest downside to this box. So take a listen. All right, let's talk about the uh, temperatures. So I saw a maximum of 96 degrees on the CPU. That's actually very, very high. And of course, it started throttling. Now, um, this fan that is in here, um, you heard how loud it is, um, and especially at 100%. Seems like it's still not quite enough to keep this cool. It does have to throttle uh, when you're playing games or doing something really intense. So that is something to be aware of, probably the biggest downside to this device. All right, so looking at the speed of the Wi-Fi, this is a Wi-Fi 6E card. And as you can see, I averaged about a 60 megabytes a second from Steam, um, lower uh, in most other game stores, but the max I got was about 60 megabytes uh, on Steam per second, which is actually very, very good. Much faster actually than my landline because my landline uses really old cables. So yes, the Wi-Fi does work well and so does the Bluetooth and both of them uh, have some pretty good range as well. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to drag in my 4K RAW video from my camera and here I'm going to just show you that it works fairly well. You can scrub through the footage. It's a slightly slow, but it's still doable, especially at 4K, so not bad at all. Where you're gonna see a bottleneck is when you export this. So if I export this as a 4K file. All right, so with regards to the render, you can see it took two minutes and 26 seconds to render a 43 second video. So um, as you can see, it takes, it's about a three to one ratio. So for every one second of video, it takes about three seconds to render. That's not very fast. You can do it a lot faster on like an M M1, M2 MacBook, or even something that's a lot more powerful in a window space. So passable, but I, you know, I wouldn't say that this is a specifically built for video editors here. So is the B-Link really for the gamer or the power user? Well, to answer your question, it's actually neither. The B-Link is actually for the casual power user. And what I mean is someone who doesn't need a full gaming rig or a full productivity machine, say video editing, etc. But if you are a casual power user and you use this for, let's say, very heavy Chrome browsing, you've got some light things you wanna do, like you wanna do some photo editing, um, you wanna do some very light video editing, this is the box for you. That being said, this box starts at $399 on Blackview, and if you are a Prime member on Amazon, you can get this for $349. So this is a different class of mini PC compared to those that have Alder Lake and 95s and 100s. This is a quite a high power, albeit a little bit older CPU in here, but it's still very, very fast for general um, all purpose use. That being said, where I see the strongest competition is coming from B-Link because B-Link does have the B-Link SER mini boxes that have 
quite powerful Ryzen 58 or 5700H processors that are almost as powerful as this in terms of CPU, if, if not the same, but they also have very strong graphics performance as well. So I would say this at its regular price, Amazon regular price of 345 is a decent deal. But if you want to wait for a sale, I would say that's where you're going to get the best value out of the Blackview MP200. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.